Okay. Hi, my name is Glenda and I'm representing a very proud Tambo Bluff Landcare Coast Care membership who have had a hard slog over the past three decades. This is the story of a dog termination by residents who took it upon themselves to restore and protect the very degraded environment in which they lived. Their vision still drives us today. In short, we try to put back what has been lost. To give you an understanding of where I live, I will take you back about 7,000 years. Around that time, the Gippsland Lakes formed from a marine embayment as sea levels rose from the Ice Age. The southern shore of Tambo Bluff was the old sea coast. Beach ba barrier beaches developed and eventually closed off the sea. Streams cut through the gravelly clay on the bluff and barrier beaches developed at their mouths, creating two lagoon wetlands. Vegetation comprised red gum, coastal grey box and mixed species forest, with swamp paper bark and banksia fringing the wetlands. Rainforest in the gullies and on the southern shore. Back then, the lake was brackish with extensive reed beds. Obviously, we don't have photos of the thousands of years prior to European settlement, but wouldn't it be wonderful to have seen the flora and fauna that would have been present leading up to the coming changes? Today, the area defined as Tambo Bluff is approximately 312 kilometres east of Melbourne on the eastern shore of the Ramsar listed Lake King. The Gippsland Lakes are the largest estuarine coastal lagoon system in Australia. A 2022 CSIO report has found they now face many threats, ranging from invasive species, pollution, bushfires and climate change. We have approximately a two kilometre frontage to Lake King which is characterised by steep and in places severely eroded escarpments. Today, Tambo Bluff is home to one of the few remaining remnant littoral rainforests on the eastern Victoria coastline. Our residential development in the East Gippsland Shire covers approximately 123 hectares. It comprises a flat dissected plain rising some 20 metres with three main mentioned barrier lagoons, one saline, one brackish. They are occasionally breached by flood events, more so in the past two years with La Nina cycle. Here you can see the two lagoons. The one on the left is the saline one and the one on the right is brackish. First one's called Dolphin Lagoon and the second one is the Bluff Lagoon. Tambo Bluff's plant and animal species were impacted, some disappearing due to our past history. But because of substantial environmental projects, the present day sees a variety of local native flora providing food and habitat. Visible are sea and land birds, both small and large, wombats, echidnas, black wallabies, microbats, sugar gliders, possums, lizards, freshwater crayfish, frogs and butterflies, to name a few. And like many areas in Australia, we can't live out the introduced and unwanted cats, foxes, rabbits and deer. These two photos were taken locally, actually from our own place. The first one is the white-bellied sea eagle and the second one is the swallow-tailed orchard butterfly. The following will outline the reasons why this parcel of land was previously referred to as the dark side of the moon. Around 1860, land in our area was acquired for farming, the first venture being cattle, but was eventually found to be too destructive on the erodible soil, so it was replaced by sheep. This was later followed by pea and bean production, largely due to the absence of severe frosts. Cattle tracks 300 millimetres deep were uncovered when the ground was being prepared for these crops. This gives you some indication of the easily erodible and compactable nature of the soil. In 1923, the whole of the property was gazetted as a sanctuary for native game. For nearly 100 years, sheep and rabbits ate and cattle ate the place to the ground. By the late 1940s, little vegetation remained. 
only occurring around the fringes. A handful of mature trees remain, some of which we are still trying to protect. Pasture crops and other invasive plants that were introduced are still a problem today. By the late 1950s, farming had become unviable and the property was sold for a subdivision in 1960. Considered incompatible with the proposed development, the Sanctuary Proclamation was revoked. Sadly for us, and more importantly, the environment, but legal at the time, the estate was one of the last in the state before new planning laws required by the standards. The developer who purchased the property in 1960 soon went bust, leaving poorly designed and unsealed roads without proper drainage, sometimes on steep slopes, resulting in erosion on the west and south bases of the bluff. Poorly installed culverts and tree removals created other erosion opportunities at locations that were probably well vegetated pre-1860. Imagine the proposed 1,195 residential allotments, plus the ludicrous idea of 33 shop sites. Fortunately, blocks have been and are amalgamated now by the Shire to reduce the number to approximately 330 residential blocks. Just imagine if it had proceeded in its original form. In 1970, it became apparent that full residential development around the lakes would create serious problems, thus threatening the very qualities which made them so attractive. In 1973, the government halted any further works here until impact studies could be carried out to ascertain the effects of substantially increased human habitation. In fact, the condition and quality had further declined due to increased weed infestation, erosion, feral animals, and the potential of septic tank effluent contaminating the waterways. The few landowners who resided here were paying for the upkeep of roads in winter so that they could access their properties. Added to this was the abuse by four-wheel drive vehicles and trail bikes, rubbish dumping from folk outside the area, and firewood gatherers, all of which resulted in Tambo Bluff becoming what was known as the dark side of the moon. We were considered the poor relation in the area, a derelict property. Those who did venture out here had no idea of the natural assets, no understanding of the ecology, and certainly no vision for its future. The estate was generally in a state of disrepair. It wasn't until late Decades later, that extensive reviews were undertaken by consultants to set out objectives to properly construct roads, drainage, water supply and reticulated sewerage. And finally, in 2007, the East Gippsland Shire Council developed the Tambo Bluff Restructure Scheme that formalised zoning and overlays and included area that had significant vegetation and environmental values. Today we have some 40 hectares of public open space. We have restored a good proportion of so far. As you know, it all takes time. So after languishing as an almost forgotten parcel of land for decades, things were slowly happening. But well before the new development was to commence, a small group of landowners had already decided to take the environmental future of the bluff into their own hands. You guessed it. A degraded landscape needed trees, some of which today feel like friends and deserve a hug. But before I forget, to make matters worse, lessons still weren't learned from past history. The second development in 2012 once again saw more unnecessary environmental negligence. Community resilience has always prevailed in the face of so much damage due to farming and substandard subdivisions. As mentioned, prior to the Tambo Bluff Restructure Scheme being formalised, a small number of residents had already met. They recognised the importance of preventing further land degradation to protect the remaining natural vegetation and raise the profile of the significant fringing wetlands. In 1993, the Land Care Group was formalised. A mud map was drawn up prioritising future projects. The vision was and remains today to restore the ecology to something akin to what it may have resembled before settlement. 
In other words, use the power of land care to shape the bluff's future. With this in mind, an extensive draft management plan was developed in 1995 by a founding member and later followed up by a five-year plan that aimed to guide the direction of the group. These documents are still relevant today to our planning activities. The contribution by Landcare to the Environment Day is clearly visible in the many thousands of native trees, shrubs and grasses that have resulted in habitat, biodiversity, shade and walkways that have provided safe access to the gullies and foreshore, thus preventing further erosion. Less visible are the huge blackberry and boxhorn infestations, which in the early days were being removed by tractors. It hasn't always been easy. One of our members said that rule number one of volunteering is to enjoy it and to sustain that enjoyment over time. Rule number one hasn't always prevailed, especially for those who carry out the burden of administrative duties. Enthusiasm has often been tempered with difficulties in gaining support from relevant sectors. Both subdivision processes resulted in sometimes fractured relationships between residents and local council. Over recent years, a great deal of resilience has been needed in the rebuilding of that partnership, as well as developing new ones. Funding opportunities do not always meet needs of our aspirations. It's a desire to care for our environment that provides the impetus to keep going. The gentleman pinched are some of our super 70s. The second photo is the 100 Steps project that leads to the Lake King foreshore. As we prepare to celebrate our 30th year anniversary as a group, we can look back on vast improvements to the landscape resulting in a healthier environment for the diverse flora and fauna native to the block. We can reflect on the legacy of that group of people who established TBLC. Then and now, continuing improvements to our walking tracks provide safe and easy access for locals, volunteers and visitors, contributing to their physical health and wellbeing. This was particularly important during the 2019-20 bushfires when Tambo Bluff provided green space for people to have time out and again during COVID lockdown. Our volunteers were able to use skills we thought we may have lost following retirement. This in itself is life affirming. Our volunteers were able to continue working while following the strict 19 COVID regulations, which gave them a chance to get out in the fresh air. Being able to contribute to the ongoing stewardship of Tambo Bluff in ways other than planting and maintenance is a mental health boost and a reminder that we all have something to contribute to the future of the environment in many ways. No group is too small to take on a challenge, especially if we all share our learned experiences and knowledge. There has always been a strong sense of achievement and camaraderie within the team when completing the smallest or dirtiest tasks and sheer delight in watching the growth of plants over the years. It's uplifting to receive a thank you from the locals as well as compliments from visiting track walkers. Sometimes after our workouts, we retire home for a freshen up, then meet at a local eatery to relax and enjoy each other's company. This is especially beneficial for those members who are either not living close to or have no family. The power of land care in having shaped and continuing to shape the future of the block is clearly visible. The external partnerships we have developed over time cannot be discounted. Along the way, we have not only received funding to rehabilitate hectares of hot, dry and barren landscape and to purchase much needed equipment for ongoing maintenance, but have provided structural amenities for the community to enjoy access to the gullies and foreshore. Thus, this in turn has provided work for local businesses and contributed to the economy. When considering the economic outcomes of the work of our volunteers, a snapshot of the past three to four years sees us undertaking approximately 2,418 on-ground hours, which would amount to 96,720 
unpaid employment. More difficult to estimate are the administrative hours which are extensive. In short, the economic benefits of our volunteer work is contributing significantly to works that may not otherwise have been undertaken. Would we get it done otherwise? We leave that for you to ponder. We have learned that a small group of people working as a team with a shared vision, determination and good leadership and the relevant partners can achieve success. Along the way, we are constantly learning more about the amazing environment within which we are privileged to live and how to go about things. Already mentioned, it is not always easy. There will always be challenges to try our resilience. Respect for differences amongst group members and finding ways to meet on common grounds is fundamental to success. Finding the right balance in working with one's partners is paramount. And let's not forget, it's okay to have fun. The slide shows one of our jovial members saving us another trip to the tip by compressing the vegetation. The following was penned in 2022 by the Mayor of the East Gippsland Shire Council after visiting the area. Tambo Bluff is sometimes maligned, previously justifiably, but in recent years we think increasingly unfairly. Council has undertaken much work to redress the poor planning decisions of the past. In concert with this, a hard-working land care group is rehabilitating the previously degraded natural landscape. In particular, the waterways and gullies are an absolute treasure and tribute to the Tambo Bluff land care group. Thank you, TBLC committee, for your vision, dedication and work. Tambo Bluff Land Care Coast Care continues the vision back in 1993 to be an ecologically sustainable, integrated landscape of residential housing and Indigenous bushland, wetland and lakeshore fauna habitat. Moving large quantities of mulch down relatively steep steps by bucket is a true testament to our commitment to the environment and our chain gang capabilities. The following Ode to Land Care was penned for an anniversary by one of our members. It was the 21st of East Gippsland Land Care Network. I'll just read it to you. Congratulations, land care groups. You'll reach your 21st. Through years of planting out the land, had missed the dust and thirst. On sunny days or stormy skies, decked out in hat and gloves, with cuts and scratches, bites and flies, you do it all with love. With spade and mattock, sticks and guards, and carrying a tree, you wonder if you'll last the day with such a dicky knee. Revegetating bush and scrub without a cup of tea, while all the time you're looking for a place to have a pee. The time flies by, you miss on lunch, but what the hell, you're here. The plants go in, you stop and chat, the day is nice and clear. Your nose is burnt, the clothes are mess, and in your head you hear. Your partner's voice this morning say, put on your sunscreen, dear. Just when you've got your little patch all growing nice and green, the kangas prune, the wombat scratch, and the rabbits eat it clean. You forge ahead and plant again, camaraderie is high. Your mates have all been here before, but first a damn good pride. To all the land care people here, you've shown you're really tough. So give yourselves a rousing cheer, you've done some real good stuff. And if you drop dead on the job, we'll dig a hole for you and plant you back out in the bush to feed a gum on two. Hopefully, when we have reached our news by date, there will be new folk to contribute to stewardship of Tambo Bluff. I trust you have enjoyed the dark side of the moon presentation. Thank you.